Hi, I'm Dr. Rachel Tate coming to you from RWCS 2019 and today I'm here with Dr. Anna Lafian who's one of our really amazing fellows this year. I'm really proud of them and she's going to tell us about her poster. Anna, where are you from? I'm actually from Loma Linda. Well, I'm from Los Angeles, but I'm doing my fellowship at Loma Linda University. That's awesome. Well, we're really glad you made the trip to come see us. So tell me about your poster. All right. So, should I grab this from you? All right. To start off with, so I'll just present the case briefly. Um, we had an 18-year-old previously healthy um, Hispanic 18-year-old female who basically presented for two weeks of progressive nausea, vomiting, and intractable hiccups. Um, she then um, was intubated for airway pr protection because she had seizing at the outside hospital and was transferred to our facility for higher level of care. Um, so at that point, we um, had an MRI that basically showed edema from the medulla all the way to the conus, um, started to get autoimmune workup. She had a, a lumbar puncture, so her lumbar pu puncture was um, consistent with l lymphocytic pleocytosis. Um, the enemos of the CSF, the aquaporin-4, actually came back high titer, um, as did the serum aquaporin-4. Um, at that point, obviously, we hadn't waited for these studies to come back because that takes quite a while, but um, we had suspected, given the transfer, extensive transverse myelitis, we had suspected NMO spectrum disorder and actually started her on pulse dose steroids for five days. Um, we also um, started plasmapheresis um, and rituximab also. We did the weekly 375 um, milligrams per meter square dosing. Um, she had great response. She was extubated after two days. She started to actually have, um, I, th I think I may have failed to mention also after she got transferred to us, she became, um, she had paraparesis, basically couldn't move her limbs. So she started to have sensation and movement, all of that. And then within a month and a half, she was up and walking. So Anna, sometimes this can look confusing, especially to someone who doesn't see this normally. It's, and if you're a rheumatology, tell me about potential for infection. Was there ever a thought process that this could be an infectious process for this patient? Absolutely. So um, we took care of this patient in collaboration with um, neurology and neuro ICU. Um, however, the initial thought um, per them was actually that this was probably a viral infection and so she was being treated with antivirals throughout the course of our treatment as well um, because these things, again, the studies don't come back for some time. Um, so, however, that thought kind of dwindled off after we found this diagnosis and then when she was seen for follow-up in our clinic, we um, actually had um, further records from the outside facility prior to her transfer and we found this so her west nile virus in the csf was positive um, the igg was positive um, and so that just led me to wonder um, that that was probably her trigger like the viral trigger that set off the anim nmo spectrum disorder in this severity so given that information do you think that this is it's not a common case, but do you think that there could be an infectious etiology that almost, like you said, triggers this for other patients? And should we be looking for other infectious opportunities for our patients and making sure that we're, we're, treating, them, we're treating the patient, not just potentially one thing? Absolutely. For me, I think it was just really fascinating because ever since starting fellowship, you know, every lecture that I've been through, I really do hear like that there's a genetic component that takes up, you know, 10 to 15, 10 to 20 percent. And then there's an environmental component, which is made up by viral triggers and other exposures and things of that nature. And I always wondered what that viral trigger was. And, you know, we read about cases reported of EBV and other viruses that can trigger um, things. But I, it was so fascinating to to potentially have like a theory about this case and what it could have been. Well, I think this is a great case and it really does highlight what we need to be doing as clinicians and treating our patients. Thank you so much, Anna, for coming. We're glad you're here. Hopefully you'll come back next year and we'll have a follow-up on our patient as well. But check us out on roomnow.com for further information and come join us in Hawaii at RWCS 2019.